challenge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm so pleased to yield such time as he may consume to Mr. Burton of Indiana, the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Western Hemisphere and a longtime veteran on uh, leading the fight against Islamic Jihadists. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized for yielding. You know, uh, those who don't profit from history are destined to make the same mistakes over and over again. When, when I knew this debate was going to take place, I went back and uh, started having my staff go through all the newspapers they could find uh, prior to World War II, uh, criticizing Winston Churchill for his uh, stand against Hitler and the buildup in violation of the Treaty of Versailles uh, of, of uh, Nazi Germany. And nobody listened. And as a result of nobody listening, 62 million people died. Not 1,000, not 10,000, 62 million people died. You ought to read these articles. They're very interesting. He was maligned. He was criticized. They said he should be run out of parliament. And of course, once the war started, he became prime minister and one of the greatest men of the 20th century. We are in a world war now against terrorism. I know my colleagues on the other side of the aisle said this isn't a world war, this is a civil war. But if you look at the record, since 1983, there have been numerous attacks, numerous attacks on the West. There have been attacks at the World Trade Center in 1993. There was attacks in 1994, the Cobar Towers in 1996, the U.S. Embassies in Kenya and Tanzania in 1998, the USS Cole in 2000, the September 11, 2001 tax which brought this country into the war, the London bombings in 2005, and countless other attacks. This is not confined just to the Middle East. These people want to spread their venom throughout the world. Now. If we pull out of Iraq, what does that do? Everybody knows right now that it's the president of Iran wants to expand his sphere of influence. He's sending terrorists across the border from Iran into Iraq. He's helping Hezbollah in Lebanon. Let me read to you a quote from him. He said, Israel should be wiped off the map, and anybody who recognizes Israel, anybody who recognizes Israel, will burn in the fire of Islamic nations' fury. And they've been involved in terrorist attacks. They're trying to build a nuclear bomb right now. And they're watching us on television as we speak. Make no mistake, Iran and the terrorists are watching. And they're thinking, my gosh, the will of the American people is waning, and we're going to turn, turn tail and run. We're going to pull out. This isn't Vietnam. Vietnam was a country, Cambodia and Laos were countries in, in Southeast Asia. This is a world war. They've attacked the United States of America. It was a worse tragedy than that which uh, took place in Hawaii in 1941 when they attacked Pearl Harbor. And now they're trying to develop a nuclear bomb. And if we pull out of Iraq, you may rest assured that Iran's sphere of influence will grow and the fear of Iran throughout the Middle East and the world will grow and they will not back down from their development of a nuclear weapon and a delivery system that can reach not only the Middle East and Europe but the entire world. And what I'm trying to say now is if we start pulling out and looking like we're turning tail and running, we're likely to be in another huge war in the years to come. I don't know whether it'll be two years, five years, or ten years, or quicker than that. But if they develop a nuclear weapon and they see that we're weak and we're weak needed and we're pulling out, they're going to push like they have been pushing. And they'll push and they'll push and they'll push until we have to go into a war that's much greater than what we face today. There's a lot at stake right here right now. And my colleagues, I think, are being very myopic. They're not looking at the big picture. This is something that I think all of us ought to think about. You know, we all have kids, and we all have grandkids, and we all have friends who are fighting in Iraq right now. We, we, we know young men who have gone over there and sacrificed, lost their arms and legs and died. And it's tragic. It's a horrible thing. World War II was horrible. Every war is horrible. When you see people die in combat, you, 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 just, you, you, you can't hardly stand it because you know how their families and they 
feel, those who survive. War is hell. But sometimes it's necessary. If you don't stand up to a bully or a tyrant, then they'll push, and they'll push, and they'll push until you have to fight. And if you wait too long, the fight is so severe that you really get hurt. It's better to whip them at the, at the beginning than wait until later on when the cost is much, much, much higher. Lord Chamberlain went to Munich in 1938-39. He signed a peace agreement on Herr Hitler's terms, gave the Sudeten land to him, said, hey, if you don't go into Poland or Czechoslovakia, we'll let you have it. All we want is peace, peace in our time. And he came back and he had given the green light to Adolf Hitler because he appeared weak. And the Allied forces appeared weak. They were dismantling their weapons and their military. And he, he said, they're weak. We can do whatever we want. And so he started World War II, and 62 million people died. We are in the same situation today, in my opinion, with the radical terrorists and Iran. We need to let them know that we're going to be firm and we're going to stand up to whatever they throw at us right now so that we don't face a major holocaust down the road. I really believe this. I'm not just saying this as a political speech. I'm not saying any of my colleagues are just making political speeches now, today. I think they really believe what they're saying. But I am convinced after studying history and watching what happened in the past that if we don't deal with this problem now, we'll deal with it later. And the cost will be a heck of a lot more than it is today. And it may involve millions and millions of lives. Can you imagine what would happen if a nuclear weapon was launched in New York, California, or someplace else in this country? Can you imagine? Can you imagine the Holocaust if a nuclear war broke out involving Iran throughout the world, not only in the Middle East? This is what I think we face right now. Deal with them now. Let them know we're going to stand firm. Iraq is going to be a democracy. We're not going to let Iran or any of the terrorists prevail. And we're going to stop a Holocaust in the future. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time.